Hey guys, it's me Sushil Adhikari for Health Info Nepal and in this video I am going to tell you about the etiology of papilloedema. Okay, first of all let's understand what papilloedema is. Okay, as the name suggests papilla means optic disc. So papilloedema is the bilateral swelling of optic disc secondary to increase in intracranial pressure. Okay. In that definition, we have to remember three things. Papilloidema is the bilateral, okay, it involves both eyes, it is it involves the swelling of optic disc, okay, it, it involves edema or swelling of optic disc, and it should be due to increase in intracranial pressure. Okay, bilateral swelling of both optic disc due to increase in intracranial pressure is called papilloidema. Okay. Uh, as we know, papilloedema is the medical emergency, so we should treat papilloedema as soon as possible. And one thing we should, uh, we can't forget about papilloedema is, in papilloedema, lumbar puncture is absolutely contraindicated because is it is the result of increase in intracranial pressure. As we tap the fluid from lumbar region, the brain tissue will herniate. Okay. As the brain tissue will herniate, the patient may die instantly. So, if we suspect papilloedema, lumbar puncture should be contraindicated. Okay. Now, uh, most of the people get confused between papilloedema and papillitis. Okay. Both involves the optic disc. Both involves the swelling, or both involves the swelling of optic disc. But what is the difference between papilloedema and papillitis? Okay. Papillitis is the it is the inflammatory condition of optic disc. Okay, papillitis can be due to either the infections or demyelinating disease. Okay, but papilloedema is always due to increase in intracranial pressure. Okay, there is no role of increase in intracranial pressure in case of papillitis. So, papillitis is a different kind of disease. Okay. And another important difference between these two diseases is papillitis uh, involves mostly involves one eye or both eyes, but the papilloedema involves both the eyes. Okay, so now uh, let's go to the etiology of papilloedema. Okay, as we have discussed earlier, papilloedema is due to increase in intracranial pressure. Okay, any disease that causes increase in intracranial pressure may lead to papilloedema for example okay congenital anomalies like congenital anomalies like stenosis of aqueduct aqueductal stenosis or craniosynostosis okay craniosynostosis may lead to the papilloedema okay and the most important cause is the intracranial space occupying lesions okay space occupying lesions in brain like tumors tumors of brain brain tumors and there is uh, the abscess formation in brain brain abscess and there is tuberculoma another condition is hematoma in brain another condition is aneurysm okay these conditions may predispose the patient to papilloedema okay mostly what happens is uh, the lesions that occurs in cerebellum midbrain and parieto occipital lesion parieto occipital region produces the papilloedema earlier than the lesion that are located elsewhere in brain okay so these lesions have higher potential to be uh, changed into papilloedema okay and uh, the lesion that are located in medulla oblongata are uh, do, uh, usually does not cause papilloedema okay so uh, intracranial speech occupying lesion is the cause is one of the cause of papilloedema like that the infection okay the infections of brain like encephalitis or meningitis can lead to the papilloedema okay and the most important cause is the destructions of arachnoid villi okay as we know the arachnoid villi causes the absorption of cerebrospinal fluid okay any pathology of arachnoid villi can uh, lead to the decreased absorption of cerebrospinal fluid and consequently results in increase in intracranial pressures okay that, that can lead to papilloedema okay 
And another most important cause is the hemorrhage. Okay, it can be uh, the subdural hemorrhage, it can be subarachnoid hemorrhage, or it can be intracranial hemorrhage. Can lead to papilledema. Another most important cause is the even the spinal cord tumor. Okay, tumor of spinal cord can give rise to papilledema. Okay, and another disease that causes papilledema is idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Okay, it is also known as idiopathic intracranial hypertension is also known as pseudo tumor cerebri okay it is a this commonly known disease and usually affects the young woman okay in this conditions also patient may develop papilledema okay now another call and then the conditions uh, that predispose the patient to papilledema is the systemic disorders like malignant hypertension in malignant hypertensions or the pregnancy induced hypertensions or cardiopulmonary insufficiency or even the nephritis can lead to papilloedema okay another most important cause is the cerebral sinus venous thrombosis okay papilloedema another most important cause is the brain edema okay cerebral edema due to blunt force injury these uh, conditions this clinical this disease may cause the papilloedema okay as we have uh, discussed earlier papilloedema is the bilateral conditions but in some conditions in some situations papilloedema can be unilateral as well okay papilloedema can be unilateral for example in case of first foster kennedy syndrome okay in foster kennedy syndromes what happens uh, in this disease is that in one eye there occurs the pressure atrophy okay in foster kennedy syndrome in one eye there will be pressure atrophy and another eye develop the papilloedema okay so in case of foster kennedy syndrome papilloedema can be unilateral okay so guys uh, this much for today and uh, i will discuss about the treatment and clinical features of papilloedema in next video thank you for watching uh, and don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel